G3 here. This is the full tutorial for the return on investment Lego puzzle box. Let's jump right in. This is a six by six plate. You can tell I've kind of cheated here because I didn't have one. So we got a, a four by six and a two by six, put them together. And I've laid out sort of the first level here. So this, this layer here is gonna just place right on top. So I'll start doing that. So I have a one by two tile and a two by two corner plate and a one by one tile. A two by a one by two plate, one by one tile again, and a one by one plate. So you can see I've sort of got this plate, tile, plate, tile, plate, tile right here. What do you think that's gonna lead to? probably some sort of daisy chain or maybe um, some sort of sliding motion that spans the length, right? So I'm gonna place a two by four plate, one by two tile. Hmm, snap. A corner plate, a one by one tile, a two by two corner plate again. A two by two tile, and if you don't have a tile you can that's in the shape of a corner, you can actually just substitute this with a one by two and a one by one tile. That's fine. Up here we have something again going on with the uh, plate, tile, plate, tile. A little one by two plate, another one by two plate on the inside, and then finally one by two tile. This is the base of the return on investment Lego puzzle box. It's really important to get studs and uh, smooth surfaces in the right place here. So I'm just gonna go through this just to make sure you have it right. I'm gonna go row by row. So I have stud, smooth, stud, smooth, stud, smooth. Smooth, stud, 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 smooth. Smooth, and then five studs six studs across, smooth, stud, 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 smooth, and then smooth, smooth, stud, smooth, stud, smooth. You'll see why it's really important to get this right. Now let's make the interior structure of the box. So the box uh, has a six by six footprint. The interior structure going to have a four by four footprint. So the interior structure is going to sit right here on the inside. So we'll start with a four by four plate. And I'm going to put a two by four plate right on top of that. A two by two plate right here, right there. A one by two plate comes here. And then we have a one by two tile just like that. So this is all studs on the second layer, except for this one tile here. Okay. Then we're gonna place this four by four plate, sorry, a one by four plate. We have a one by two tile and a one by one plate here. And then this money piece sits right like that. So it'll slide out with the one out and the zeros on the inside. We have a two by three plate right there. And I'm gonna place, so I've got two one by one bricks here. There's not many bricks in this on the inside, but we have a couple. So those go on the two adjacent corners of this two by three plate that we just placed. And a one by three tile sits right there. Two by two plate. One by two plate. Like that. And guess where this tile goes? Yep, just comes right there. Spanning those two, that little crack. And just try to line up your one by one uh, bricks. 
Normally, we try not to use one by one bricks, partly because they can spin like that and create snags, but it's a small, this is a pretty small box, so, um, so this is, we, this is the best structure we could build on the inside and still have paths for movement on the interior. Now I'm gonna just take that and take the uh, base that I just made right here. And here's my little corner tile. So that helps me orient this. The other way you can orient is there's one stud on one corner. Um, and I'm gonna take this and just, oops, just place it right in the middle like that and press it in nice and firm. All right, we're starting to get a puzzle. Let's go. All right, I'm just gonna place a couple more of these plates. So a one by three plate comes here, and then a, finally a one by four plate there. And that's our base. All right, now we're gonna make the four edges of the box. And this is the first edge. Uh, there's a few things I want to point out here. Um, the first one is that there's a level of the box that is sort of a color ring that goes around. So that's why these are colored and the rest of it's white. It just makes it look really nice. Um, also, this is just a one by one tile. You don't need to have a curved piece here like I have. I just ran out of red uh, one by one tiles. And this one needs to match the color that ends up being on the top of the box because that sort of indicates, yeah, you're supposed to do something with this coin. Um, the other thing that's most important is that each of these uh, pieces on the side, the bottom pieces, are Frankenbricked. What I mean by Frankenbricking is that I have removed with pliers the rod on the bottom here. I've pulled them out. Not all of the pieces are Frankenbricked, but some of them are. So this piece is Frankenbricked. The rod is removed. This piece is Frankenbricked. The rod is removed. This one is not Frankenbricked. So this one's just a normal one. It has the rod still attached. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna link to a video here on how to remove the rods and Frankenbrick your bricks. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, this video uh, right here will show you how to do that. All right, so let's get started. We have first three uh, one by twos, Frankenbricked, Frankenbricked, not Frankenbricked. Let's put those together and attach a one by six plate on the top. Just like that, okay? Then we'll put on the, a one by two plate, a one by three plate that sticks out. See how this is sticking out right here? Our one by one tile goes there and a one by two plate goes there. Then we're gonna have oh, another one by two plate on top, a one by three plate here on top. So I'm leaving a space above the one by one tile. And then I'm gonna put on the very top a one by six tile, just like that. And this one by two tile just sits on the inside like that. And press this together well. Let me show you what this looks like. Just like that. And then this can be placed onto your base now. So it goes just like this. And this should be able to create some side to side movement like that. Okay, the next side of the box. Uh, this one is just three long. So we're gonna start with a one by three brick. This one is also Frankenbricked. So the rods have been removed, both rods. There's two and they've both been removed uh, from, from this brick. And we'll start just by placing a one by three plate on top of that one by three brick. A one by one plate, another one by one plate. Again, this is the color stripe on the box. And then this one by two tile sits inside like that. Okay, then we have a one by one plate. 
This corner plate comes on top, just kind of sits on top of that money piece. Um, a one by three tile on top and a one by one tile on top. That's it right there. This money piece should be able to slide in and out like that. Okay. And this one, if we look at our uh, base plate, attaches just right there. Okay. Just like that. Now for the next side of the box. This one has a one by two brick, a one by two brick, and a corner brick. So this is a brick also. And that one's Franken-bricked, that one's Franken-bricked, and even this one is Franken-bricked. This is the first time I've ever used a corner piece. And let me tell you something, there's a bit on the corner on the inside. Um, this one was a little bit more difficult, so after you uh, remove the rods from this one you might actually have to sort of scrape out uh, some of the edges to make sure that it moves cleanly okay so let's put these together one two three with a one by six plate that spans and connects it the one by one plate just on that corner okay next is our color ring one by three plate a one by two tile, a one by two plate, and a one by one plate. This could have been a corner, but we like to have this color difference uh, for the different sides so that the color changes. Now we have a one by one plate here, one by four, one by two, and then tiles on top. One by two, one by four, one by one. Uh, I like having this not be a tile on top. It's sort of just, you know, it looks like these are a little bit separate here, even though they're not. Uh, so it kind of is a little bit of a deception for expert puzzle solvers. So that's what it looks like. And if I grab my box, we assembled it like this. I'm gonna spin it 180 degrees now and just place it there on the back side. Okay. Okay, finally, the final side. We're gonna start this one actually, instead of with a brick with a one by four plate, this one has been Franken bricked. And something that's really important to point out is when you're selecting a one by four plate, sometimes there are just micro grippers just on the inner walls here that make, that sort of prevent them from sliding smoothly. And um, if you Franken brick one with the grippers on it and try it out, you'll see that as you move it, it kind of snaps and there's like a, a lot of force required and then it snaps into place. That's not really the puzzle, uh, the puzzle sort of motion or feel that I like to have because we don't want people to feel like they have to pop the movements in LIGO puzzles. That can lead them to popping things that were not meant to move in the first place. So if you find one and you do and you remove the under tubes from the one by four plate and you find it doesn't move smoothly, uh, it could be because you have micro grippers uh, on there. I call them. Um, what are they actually called? I can't remember. I call them micro grippers. Anyways, uh, the other thing with Franken breaking the plate is you actually want to kind of take out the residue of the rods because um, you can remove the the tubes and find that that is actually also still causing some resistance. And one thing that I did to do that, um, this is not in the Franken Bricken video, so I'll show you right now, is I just kind of take my my pliers and just, you know, just kind of just scrape it out back and forth. Not too hard, but just to kind of remove some of the extra dust uh, that and the little bits that are still sticking up. And then you'll sort of dump that out. Okay, so that's enough about that. Let's build this up. So here I have a one by two plate. A one by one plate goes there. And then a one by one tile. This one should also be red, preferably not transparent, but I didn't have a solid red one by one tile left. So that's what I used. Um, these 
other one by two and one by one plates go forward there. The one by three plate on top, the one by one tile. Okay, now our color ring. Clearly you could substitute a one by three here uh, if you want, but you don't have to. You could do a one by two and a one by one. A one by four plate then comes on top of that. So you see I kind of have this I have this empty space here, but even on the edge, I now have an empty space. And then finally, a one by four tile. Just like that. And let's place this one. Can you guess where that place is? It places right here. Now, uh, I'm gonna show you, because we assembled it in this position. I'm gonna move it to the way, um, way that I want it here, which is like this, okay? And I'm just going to point out, this is where the hole is, okay? Right there. Can you see that? Sort of, let me pull it up. Can you see that hole right there? That's on that side. And then we're just going to place it inside here. All right, that's the final wall. All right, now we're going to put sort of the uh, ceiling on. And um, it's really important to get this first piece right or this will end up being very annoying so I'm gonna place this one by one plate and the place that I'm gonna put it is right inside and it's just resting for now right there okay see that I'm putting it right touching this uh, one by one brick that's coming up here and covering up one of the money pieces and it's just floating for now okay so you don't want that to jostle out of place before we put the next pieces on. So the next piece is this two by three plate and it just goes right on top. So there should be a little channel right here that's left open. And I'm just gonna snap that into place. Then we have a one by three plate that comes here. And right now this is only attaching to one stud right here. So it has, it's allowed to rotate a little bit until we put the one by four in also. Okay. Now finally, we're gonna place a six by six plate on top, just like that. And you can really press this in. Okay. Um, now we just need to put the roof onto the box. Let's place some plates on top. Just wanna to remind you that this is the part that has been facing down the whole time, downward. Okay, I wanna place a two by four plate and a one by two plate just right there. Another two by four plate comes here and a one by six plate. Now this little area in here, which is three by four, is actually gonna be inset slightly. So I'm gonna put a one by four tile there, another one by four tile right there. Now I've got a one by two jumper plate, so it's like a, a plate with a center stud. Then a one by one plate comes here, and finally another tile piece. Let's just press this in nice and tight. All right, let's take the final steps here. Uh, so we're gonna basically put a bunch of tiles on. We have one more one by one plate. We have some red pieces and we have a money piece tile, a nickel, I guess. So I'm gonna start with this one by two tile and a one by four tile right there. And then we'll do the same thing on this side, a one by two tile. Actually, I'm gonna swap this right now. I'm gonna put a one by two tile here, a one by four tile there, okay. A one by four in the back. One by four here. A one by two. One by one. A one by one plate now comes right there. And our little nickel sits on top. So this is just a round tile money piece. And then we're gonna make a little arrow that points, giving a clue as to the first step. So this goes on the jumper plate right there. 
And then I have this little one by one tile that's rounded. And that comes right there. So that should be pointing toward the edge. And then you can use this tile, to, this uh, jumper place to slide that up to sort of make it into like a something that symbolizes an arrow. And that's it. Now, I just want to say one final thing, and that's that this puzzle is pesky. It's a little bit frustrating. Um, and the right approach to this is to try to create a mental or a diagram model of what you think is happening on the inside um, as the movements are made, because it's a sort of a dynamic puzzle as the inside changes. Um, the things that other parts do also change and it's really important to try to understand what's happening inside the box as you're taking different movements. If you can't figure that out then you're going to be very frustrated and you may not solve it. Um, there's also a trap in it that is very annoying and most likely uh, the first time you try to solve it you'll you will fall for the trap and you have to sort of undo uh, the what had happened in the trap it's a frustrating box so not for the faint of heart don't just give it to your friends if they're not expert puzzle solvers they'll just get frustrated and give up on you um, but it might be a good one for you to actually try for yourself you know uh, this this one you've assembled it you have a little bit of an idea of what the inside looks like that's gonna give you some traction on getting started hope you enjoyed this full tutorial Cheat 3, out.